Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about Azure Managed Identities. So the reason why I am doing this video is like I am getting number of queries from my students and also from uh, the users. Okay. So let's explore more about this Managed Identities as there is always a confusion between this system assigned, service principal and all of this stuff, right? So let's explore what is there and how we can use this, okay? So manage entities provide an automatically manage entity for applications. So which means when you create a VM or when you create an application, if that application needs to access any other resource within Azure, you need to authenticate it so every time it is difficult to authenticate by providing username and password so for that what we can do is uh, we can use manage entity so let's deep dive more about this okay so if you look at there are two types of manage entities one is system assigned manage entity and user assigned manage entity so the name itself indicates that when you enable the system assigned manager entity, it is all managed by Azure, automatically created, and it will be tied to the lifecycle of your Azure service instance. So which means, let's say when you create a VM, and if you apply or if you enable managed entity on that VM, by default, Azure will create a managed entity for that VM. And when you delete that VM, that manage entity also will get deleted. Okay, so we'll see the use cases, how it's going to be helpful in the real time uh, uh, scenarios. So then it will be easy for you to understand. And similarly, we also have user assigned manage entity, which is like we can create manage entity and can assign it to any of the service for authentication purposes. So the benefit of this one is we will not be managing with any of the credentials. So the differences between main entities and service instances we can see it later. And before we go to that, let's see the use cases of manage entity and service principle. So when you look at manage entity, if you if any web app accessing Azure SQL database, right, it needs a kind of authentication. Without authentication, it will not be able to connect to that SQL database. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to enable manage entity on top of that connection so that it will authenticate itself whenever it needs to communicate to SQL database. And also if you look at another example, virtual machine accessing Azure Stories, right? So if VM needs to access Azure Stories without any human intervention, you can enable this manage entity so that it will get authenticated itself to that Azure Stories. Okay. If you look at one more use case, function app accessing Key Vault. Okay. So Key Vault will have the stories, I mean the secrets like password, certificates and things like that. So if you wanted to enable access to it, it means function app is accessing a Key Vault. So this manage entity is helpful when one resource, when I say resource, it can be a web app, VM or anything. One, one resource is accessing another resource within the Azure platform. So we are calling it a manage entity. Remember, there are two types of manage entities. One is system assigned manage entity and user assigned manage entity. So along with this, we also have service principle. So, service principles are almost like service accounts, right? Let's say you're deploying infrastructure in Azure platform using our DevOps platforms. So, when you are deploying resources in Azure platform, you need to enable authentication for this deployment, okay? Whether it is a username or whether it is a service account, whenever you try to deploy, you can use service account. So it means you're going to add the service principal credentials 
on the CI CD pipeline and then it will get authenticated using the credentials and the resources will be deployed. Okay. And also, if you look at another example, application accessing Azure AD. So, you are going to enable this service principle. Okay. On premises app integrating with Azure. So, service principle is totally different. Manage entity is totally different. Do not confuse in between these. Okay. So, I'll repeat manage entity is for enabling communication or enabling authentication between one resource to another resource within Azure platform. Whereas service principle is a type of credentials which you will be using it to get authenticated for the deployment. It means when you are trying to deploy any of the resource, you need to get authenticated which will happen through this service principle. Okay, just like a service account. Now, let's come back to this differences. Okay, so managed entities use Azure AD tokens while service principles use application secrets or certificates. And you can look at the lifecycle management and also the authorization. Okay, service principles use application level permissions whereas Manage entities can be granted permissions at the resource level. Okay, so the benefits of using entities are like improved security, simplified integration, cost optimization, scalability, and flexibility. So you can see the comparison, and you can ping me on my Telegram channel and you can ask questions, or if you have questions, you can comment on this uh, video and I'm going to provide an update based on your queries. Thanks for watching this video. Join.